Who can fly? You can fly. We're talking with Pat Brown today in The Hangar. I used to be a well-respected member of the aviation community, and then I started flying a Cirrus and that changed. Oh, well, that was great until the engine quit. And all of a sudden I see these explosions and these trees exploding. I'm walking away a better pilot because of this discussion. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Wong, and today we're here with guest Pat Brown and former Rusty pilot Bob Flowers. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here yeah, today. Our pleasure, our pleasure. So uh, I opened up by saying you can fly. That's actually the initiative, That's or correct. one of the initiatives with AOPA. That's correct. Would you, you mind fly. telling us about You Can Fly? Uh, Christy, I would be happy to do that for you tonight. <laughs> uh, you Can Fly uh, was conceived a number of years ago. Uh, at uh, AOPA headquarters in uh, Frederick, Maryland. There are four legs to the stool, if you will. One is Rusty Pilot, of course. Um, the other is, so another one is our Flying Club Initiative. Then we have our High School Initiative. And the fourth one is our Flight School Initiative. And uh, I don't know how you want to go into those. We can talk about them in any order which you, which you like. But those are the four initiatives that, that uh, make up the You Can Fly program. Okay, so let's start off by talking about the uh, the flight school portion. Okay. I mean, each of these is actually relevant to me in okay. some form or fashion, but we'll start with the, the flight school. Okay, sure. So we did some research a number of years ago and found that, that if you start flight training, there's an 80% chance you won't finish. Think about that for the staggering number that that represents, 80%, especially with the pilot shortage we have these yeah. days. We didn't have that pilot shortage, you know, back when this uh, program was was conceived uh, necessarily, but uh, but 80%. Uh, and That's actually very tragic it, sounding. It, 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 well, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's uh, it's it's a lot of wasted effort that didn't go through to to fruition. So uh, we began to do some research to see why that happened, and, and it's a lot of things. It's it's cost, but cost isn't the number one reason. Uh, it tends to be more of the value for the for the money spent. Uh, tends to be a little bubbles to the top a little bit more than money. But um, so we began to think, look, there's got to be something that we can do to have an effect on that. So we're developing currently, we're developing a, uh, a seminar that flight schools can can bring us in for uh, called Customer Service Excellence. And essentially it's kind of Customer Service 101. Now, I, I don't know much more about it, honestly, than that at this moment. The idea is is really just to help flight schools in general up their customer service game. Okay, that's excellent. Sure. And then for the like the high school initiatives, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I know that that kind of goes hand in hand with the flight schools, right? Well, I mean, they're 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 two sides of the same coin, if okay. you will, or or four sides of the same square. I don't right. know. <laughs> uh, it, 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 they all they all fit together. Um, we once again saw a need to 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 find a way to bring more young people into aviation. So why not do it at the high school level? So to that get them end, hooked when they're good and get young. Them hooked yeah, when exactly. Good and young. <laughs> so so we began to work with a curriculum developing company, and last year we worked with I believe it was 27 high schools uh, around the country. Uh, and they tested our ninth grade aviation curriculum. Um, this year, 25 schools are testing our 10th grade aviation curriculum, and 80 schools are using the ninth and the 10th oh, grade wow. curriculum. So next year, uh, probably the same 25 schools that are testing the 10th grade curriculum will test the 11th grade curriculum, and of course, as things grow, eventually, we'll have four full years of a high school curriculum, two paths, one professional pilot, and one for UASs. And at the end of the junior year, they'll take their written test for whichever path they choose. And at the end of the senior year, there'll be a senior class project, or they could opt to actually learn how to fly if they so choose. We're not just saying, okay, on uh, uh, next week, go teach these kids about the Wright brothers. That's not what this is at all. This is more like on September the 15th at nine o'clock in the morning, you're going to build a wind tunnel. And here's what the wind tunnel is going to look like. And here are the materials that you're going to have to have to do it. And here's how you're going to construct it. And by the way, here's how you can build some wings to test it and see what the most effective things are. And here's some ways you can change up the, the wing plan form and things like that. So this is a really, really comprehensive uh, um, 
curriculum, and, and we're working long and long and hard hours on it, and, and we've actually had to increase the number of people in the department to work on it. It's, wow. it's, it's it, it, the, the interest has been that great. That's good. Yeah, it's very, very, very cool. Cindy Hasselbring is the person that heads that program up, and she is just awesome. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about Rusty Pilot. Sure. Um, we have a former Rusty Pilot here. Yeah, baby. So, <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so what does AOP do to help Rusty Pilots get back into aviation? Sure. So Rusty Pilot, again, one of the legs of the uh, You Can Fly program. Um, this was conceived, again, about four or five years ago. Um, it started out as a beta testing program that we did uh, locally. Mark uh, Grady and I wrote the, the first version of that with, along with Brittany Michulka, who at the time worked for uh, AOPA headquarters. And Mark and I wrote the initial uh, uh, beta version of that and delivered it in some local areas just to test a little bit. And then the first year, we did it just at the seven AOPA fly-ins that we had around the country. And, and the response was so good that uh, headquarters thought, oh, well, this has got some legs. So they took the bones of, of what Mark and I had and Brittany had, had worked out and kind of slicked it up a little bit and, and the production values became better and it just became a, a really professional looking presentation. And since that time, we've delivered it, um, gosh, I don't know how many times we've delivered it, but probably to uh, um, 30, 40,000 pilots. Uh, at this count right now, we're about 6,000 rusty pilots that are back in the air. Wow. And think about that. You know, I mean, 6,000 people, that's a lot of people that are back flying that weren't flying just a few years ago. Yeah. It's a three hour ground school, three, three and a half hours, kind of depending on who's doing it. Uh, mine tend to run about three and a half hours because I throw in some extra stuff. Um, and at the end, they'll walk out with a, a logbook endorsement, good for the ground portion of their flight review. Oh, that's excellent. <laughs> now, Bob, you didn't go through AOPA's Rusty Pilots program, correct? Well, I, I did attend one class. Okay. And it was after I got started back as a pilot. Uh, I sat out for 14 years mm -hmm. uh, with just under 1,000 hours. I gave up flying. Uh, circumstances. My father retired. I was flying him all over the state of Texas. He was a, a state official and uh, he retired. And I, I didn't have, I had five kids uh, that were, Josh was the last of the litter. So <laughs> taking up a lot of my Makes my a lot of sense time. now. Yeah, <laughs> right. But uh, after I got back into flying, after, after Josh wanted to train and he got his license and then I got back into it. Uh, and shortly after that, I attended one of your seminars up in up in Temple, Texas. And you started flying anyway. I, yes, I did. <laughs> I was a little late getting there because Josh was going to come to San Marcos to pick me up in a Mooney. And uh, I was watching on my iPhone, uh, FlightAware, and he came about a third of the way down, and then the airplane turned around and was going back to Temple. I said, that's my ride. <laughs> so a little bit later, he called me and said, something, uh, the ILS is, down in San Marcos, and so he couldn't land there. So yeah. get in the truck and drive up. So I did. The seminar is wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful. Very well organized. You know, take takes a step, and, and even though I'd, I'd gotten back into flying for a little while, uh, it's bringing back so many things to me. Uh, mm -hmm. From just looking at a section and picking things out that yeah. oh I've forgotten about, yeah. to uh, emergency procedures mm -hmm. uh, and just basic things that uh, over 14 years that have, have escaped me. Mm -hmm. They're and, still uh, there. They were just kind of back They, the they were just kind of in the back and yeah. uh, it was extremely helpful and uh, Josh and I talked about it ext uh, pretty extensively after I sat through that and uh, of course with Josh, he's helped me along a little bit too. Just a little. It was a really wonderful experience yeah. and I uh, thank you for oh, gosh. what you do. Thank you for being there. Thank so you what you're saying is that it was effective. Very effective, <laughs> yes, yes. Awesome. I, I'm still flying, I haven't bent the plane. So well, that's, that's, that's good. always a good thing. Yeah. You know, during, during the, uh, the introduction to the, to the seminar, I'll, I'll usually say something like, I will bet you, I will bet you, no matter how long you've been out of flying, that at some point, at least once during the next three hours, you're gonna say, oh yeah, I remember that. And of course at the that's end, right. I'll say, now how many of you had that aha moment, I promised you? 
and uh, most of them will raise their hands. Right. So, and then some are just firmly non-committal. <laughs> so, yeah. I know yeah. I was doing it a lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's awesome. That's I mean, it's so great that AOPA has these programs available. Um, I want to touch briefly on the fourth leg of the stool, just mm -hmm. so that we we hit that. Um, it is flying clubs. Yes. What is uh, you can fly and AOPA doing to help uh, local area flying clubs? Well, we're helping form them. Let's talk about that just for a second. Um, we, we're helping to form them. So just to give you a little bit of uh, a little statistical uh, information, uh, since You Can Fly started, we've, we've gotten, I think it's 102 flying clubs started from That's scratch. That's amazing. Last year alone, uh, 2018, we ended up with 37. Our goal was 35. Our corporate goal was 35. Um, in the state of Texas in 2017, uh, we helped get 11 started. Last year, 2018, we helped get seven started. And I'm going to do a shout out to the Texoma Flying Club up in Denison because they were the first flying club of 2019 and it was in Texas. Excellent. Yay. Um, so we helped flying clubs get started. Uh, you experienced uh, one of the things that we mm -hmm. did a couple of months ago. We had a flying club uh, roundtable mm -hmm. uh, over in Addison. And uh, I guess uh, nine of our, and there's 11 flying clubs here in the in the Metroplex. Uh, nine and eight or nine of them were there. And we had a room full, 25 people maybe. Yeah, and, it was uh, it was great, very was, very um, educational. Yeah, it was a really good opportunity for all the clubs just because most of the clubs hadn't really met each other before. They may have known yeah. they were in existence, but they really hadn't met, and there had never been any kind of get together like that. And out of that, uh, somebody created, uh, I don't remember what the Facebook page is, but somebody created Yeah, like a, a flying club, you know, a closed secret flying group, club. Yeah. yeah, kind of a secret group. So now all of you <clears throat> now know each other and can communicate back and forth. You have a secret handshake and all that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we've got the fist bump and yeah, everything. Yeah, you know, so. all that stuff. But so, uh, but, uh, but we also have resources at headquarters. If uh, our legal services plan, for example, um, uh, people, if you're an AOPA member, you can use part of your legal services plan if you have questions on forming flying clubs. We have so much uh, information now on how to form a club, LLCs versus corporations and the benefits and drawbacks of, of both. Um, and, and just the how-to, We I can't imagine that there's much we haven't seen now over the course of the last three or four years of doing this. So if people want to start a flying club, which is, which is frankly the most affordable way to fly an airplane is Can to be confirm. a member of a club. Think about it, it's cost yeah. sharing, right? Uh, if you've got 10 people sharing a, an airplane, $100,000 airplane, that's basically $10,000 a piece and you go buy an airplane. And uh, if my arithmetic is right, and then uh, uh, you know that four thousand dollar annual becomes four hundred dollars a piece, right. as opposed to having to write a check for four thousand dollars. There's a camaraderie factor, a social factor. People are drawn to other pilots. You want a safety pilot? Pick up the phone and call one of your club members. In your case, you could call Josh. But, oh, <laughs> but uh, that's what I do. Yeah, <laughs> well, you don't call Josh. You better call Steve. Oh, but, uh, when Steve's gone on a trip, there you go. There we go. I've, I've got my backup. Yeah, there you go. So those are, I mean, that in kind of in a nutshell, those are the kind of things that we can do to help flying clubs. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I, I can absolutely attest to um, the benefits of being in a flying club and what AOPA has done yeah. to help flying clubs. So thank you again so much, yeah, you're very Pat. Welcome. You've been wonderful. You, you've literally, I mean, you fly up here, <laughs> and you, you do all of the like, you know, the wing seminars mm -hmm. and just all sorts of stuff. So you're just such a wonderful asset. I hope we have you around forever. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Chris. I am personally a proud um, supporter of AOPA and will thank continue you. to be. Thank so you. thank you again for everything. And Bob, thank you for coming and sharing Thanks your story as well. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. If you like what you see, please uh, watch, subscribe, and as always, you can fly.